Hi everybody, I'm Leah of CJ Drill. I gotta tell you this, if you're new to this channel or you're a beginner woodworker, I'm so glad you joined us. Sometimes we talk about woodworking, sometimes we talk about home improvement. Now today, we're talking about a tool that is just misunderstood. And sometimes people just don't even really know what it does. And that tool is the joiner. And I'm gonna show you all about it coming up next. I just got my cabinet sample doors from cabinets.com. And I gotta tell you, I wasn't certain about the color, so I requested two doors. Now the door on the right is espresso, and the door on the left is smoky charcoal. I took advantage of their fully refundable sample door program, and the returns are free. I ultimately decided against the smoky charcoal and went with the espresso because it best suited my vision for the kitchen. If you're new to woodworking, you may be used to seeing beautiful wood like you see at home improvement stores like this wood here. But buying your wood like this can get really expensive. Now, as you get into woodworking a little more involved, you're going to want to purchase rough cut lumber. Now, that's what this is here. Now, I've asked the camera person to come in close so you can really see how rough it is. You can actually see the fibers sticking up out of the wood. This doesn't look like anything you would ever see at a home improvement store. Now, beyond the rough texture, okay, of the surface, check this out. Can you see that? It's rocking back and forth. The wood is cupped a little bit. Okay, so our wood is really rough, right? But I'm gonna show you how to transform this wood so it looks as good, if not better, than wood you find in a big box store and for a lot less. What you have to do is you have to think of a joiner as being a wood fixer, okay? If you have a piece of rough lumber and it's twisted or it's cupped, or it's bowed, a joiner gets the process going. But you see, a joiner is different than most tools, like a hammer. If you drive a nail, the job is over, okay? Or if you've got a saw and you cut the wood, the job is complete. But this is where a joiner gets a little confusing. It doesn't finish the job. It starts the job and it has a supporting cast. And the supporting cast to finish transforming the lumber to a piece of wood that you can use for a project is usually a table saw and a thickness planer. So let's get started on the joiner and let me show you how this all works. So this is our bench top joiner here. It's on the small side, but you know what? They get very large, all right? This is just a small one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our guard here and swing this out of the way. And this cylinder here, that's where our blades are. And that's what actually cuts the wood. Now this side of the joiner, this table here, that's called the infeed. We're gonna be shooting our wood in this direction. Now this side of the joiner is called the outfeed. Now this right here, that's called our fence and our wood rides up against it. I'm taking a square because I want to make certain that my fence is square to my table and it is. Now I'm going to take my piece of wood and I'm going to lay it on my infeed side of my joiner, cup side down. Now here's one last thing, I'm going to pull the guard back to show the blade, okay? It's rotating clockwise, all right? Now, the orientation of your wood matters. The direction the grain is traveling, you wanna go with the grain, not against the grain, because if you go against the grain, you're gonna have an uneven cut. It's not gonna look good. If you go with it, it'll be a nice, nicer, smoother finish. Now, this is where you set the depth of the blade, how much you're going to take off, okay? I like to set mine between 1 32nd and 1 16th. You definitely don't want to go beyond 1 16th because then you're going to be taken off too much. Now I'm going to turn it on. Now that we've run it through, you can see where it's dead flat now, 
Now let's flip it over and take a look at the other side. Now, where the other side was fibrous, look at how nice and smooth it is. Now that I've done the face, now I'm going to get an edge, okay? And I'm going to ride the finished face up against our fence. Here we go. I don't have to worry about push sticks because my hands are going to be far enough away from the guard and the blade. So here's the thing, the joiner's job is finished. It's done the face, one face, and it's done one edge. Now it's time for the supporting cast to finish the job. We're going to take it over to the table saw, and we're going to square up the other side, and then we're going to take it to the thickness planer to finish the job. So that's it, that's our wood done, transformed from an ugly duckling to an actual piece of lumber that we can use for a project. Both sides are done, both uh, edges are done, and what I will tell you is this, the joiner, it does part of the job, and again, the supporting cast, the table saw, and the thickness planer finishes the job. The other thing I wanna say is, you don't have to have a thickness planer, and you don't have to use a table saw. There are other alternative methods you can use to finish the job that the joiner starts. So hopefully I showed you how a joiner fixes wood. And just think of it as a wood fixer, or at least the first part of transforming a piece of wood so you can really use it for woodworking. So I wanna mention one last thing, and that is, I'm gonna place a link in the description below the video to cabinets.com. They're our sponsor this week, and not only are they our sponsor, we're using cabinets.com in our kitchen remodel. So check them out for yourself. I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. This is Leah saying you can do this. See you next time.